Hi ho, Nation Nation, Harry here, uh, coming at you from uh, the Seattle area where it's a chilly 32 degrees outside with wind. Winter, winter like weather is starting to uh, work our way in. Um, it is a special webinar today with a, quite a large audience on uh, sales and marketing, basically, the three forgotten steps, blah, 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 attract clients, earn more, and actually work less with that. Uh, really well researched and thought out um, uh, uh, content. Um, and, and, and we're gonna talk about that as we go through one of my favorite books ever from Chet Holmes. Um, before we get going a little bit of housekeeping, use the questions feature in your control panel to ask your questions. Uh, our intent today is to answer the questions at the end. And I'll tell you what, the nature of this webinar is such that we're probably gonna answer questions you have near term in one or two slides. So bear with us as we kind of get get through the deck and then we'll be happy to uh, happy to take your questions. Um, in terms of some travel, travel coming up, I always like to see people on the road. So I'm gonna be at Channel Pro SMB in the New York City area, actually Newark, New Jersey on November 6th and then Denver, Colorado for Ingram One. I'm just looking at my calendar off screen. That'll be November 18th through 20th, uh, basically uh, almost the third week of November in Denver, Colorado for Ingram One. So those are the ones that are on the board as of today. Hope to see you there. Now let's jump right into it. We have a lot of content to cover. So we have uh, my soul, my soul mate across the <laughs> across the time zones coming to us from Israel. Ari, how you doing? Uh, your evening, my morning. <laughs> I'm fantastic. Well, it feels like the day's just getting started because we've been looking forward to this and super excited about it. So thanks for the intro and uh, yeah, excited to dig in and uh, share with SMB Nation some ways to attract ideal clients and grow their MSP and IT business. All right, let's do it. You got the talking stick. Let's get going. All right, let's rock and roll. So I'm just going to turn off my webcam and just so you can focus straight on the content. Um, would love, if if possible, would love to hear how many people are calling in and where you guys are calling in from just to make it more of a community feel. So just as we're getting started, would love if you just type in the comments in the questions or in the chat, where are you calling in from and what your name so you can have a little bit of engagement. Um, and then, yeah, as just as Harry said, we'll leave the questions for the end. So welcome to the training of three forgotten steps for local IT service providers and MSPs to attract ideal clients, earn more and actually earn less, work less. And this is exactly how to be done in the next 28 days. So over the next 45 to 60 minutes, I'm going to teach you this by showing you a proven education based marketing system that works that will delight you in its simplicity um, to help solve two big problems. We've spoken to hundreds, if not thousands of MSPs and IT service providers at this point, and this training is designed to solve two big problems. Problem number one is that you're working too hard, which means that you don't have any time for yourself. You have priorities you never get to, which I've heard a lot. Uh, you're overbooked, you're undervalued and or underpaid. All of those completely suck. Problem number two is that you have no system, i.e. solution. In other words, non-ideal clients are coming, but they're coming haphazardly. You have no clear picture on how to grow your own revenue. And without a picture, you cannot get to the destination. And you're not even attracting you know, ideal clients in the first place. So if those are problems that sound familiar. Uh, and, are, and are way too close to home, then you're gonna love the solutions that you're gonna learn during the training. Solution number one is your work on your terms. Whether you're an I, in an IT department or you have your own business, you're gonna be, learn how to get it all done with time for yourself. You're gonna achieve your top priorities, and it's not how you think. In other words, the, the way that a lot of people think, especially MSPs and IT service providers, is a certain linear way of thinking of trying to get to their top priorities, which is why it never gets done. What you're gonna learn today is gonna help you um, in a more holistic approach. And you're gonna learn how to get book solid with ideal clients who pay you what you want. Solution number two, you're gonna have a system which means a well-oiled machine. You're gonna attract only clients you wanna work with who chase you. You have a clear map of your revenue streams and you're gonna learn how to leverage this repeatable system as rinse and repeat. 
This is not theory. This has been proven in the field. And just as that guy is celebrating, you're going to learn. <laughs> you're not going to learn how to dance or wear a pink shirt, but it is going to be a lot of fun. So just a little bit of introduction. Um, Atera uh, is known as the ultimate all-in-one RMM, remote monitoring and management platform for IT service providers, MSPs, and IT departments to simplify their work. In terms of my credibility to convey this content to you, I have advised Fortune, 5, Fortune 500 companies from Google to GM to Facebook to Starbucks, uh, Ivy League universities from Harvard to uh, Princeton to uh, Johns Hopkins Medical government offices around the world, NASA, and over 80,000 small business owners have all attended my trainings in the last four years alone, not to mention the results that we've gotten, but instead of taking more time on that, I also want to share with you how this has been used specifically for MSPs and IT service providers and IT services in 56 countries across five continents speaking 21 different languages all rely on Atera to run their IT business. And you'll see how that fits into context as we go through the training. So in terms of context for how this whole thing came about, we pulled uh, 425 plus MSPs asking a really simple question. Which of the following topics do you most want to learn about? How to attract more clients, got over 50%. How to get more done while working less was the big winner. How to increase your revenue, how to create more effective presentations, and how to attract better clients. So on the one hand, this was of a lot of interest. And then on the other hand, we asked, what's your single biggest challenge trying to grow or improve your business right now? I'm going to supply a bunch of answers. And as you're looking at this, uh, think to yourself how strongly this resonates with yourself. Number one, getting more clients, particularly advertising, obtaining new customers, growing our customer base, getting my name out there. These are all things that MSPs have sent in, uh, new client acquisition and marketing, marketing materials, and that's just the beginning. There's a ton from marketing the worth of managed services. Clients are slow to adopt a managed environment for us. Uh, so selling ideals are helpful, marketing the worth of managed service. There's a ton of stuff. And the reason why I'm sharing this is to show the need and the interest and the desire, uh, especially because you're a tech genius. You're an IT service provider who has a unique expertise. So as this uh, one MSP said on the, on, on the bottom, new client acquisition is what he wants to learn because he's a tech. He's not a salesman. So here's what you're going to discover on today's training. First is the big opportunity why the IT service market specifically is one of the fastest growing markets today. This is something that is beyond exciting because you're gonna learn that you're actually in the right place at the perfect time, especially if you learn how to leverage this opportunity. You're gonna learn how to attract 22, 22 times more leads from your potential audience with what's known as an ST. You'll learn what that is in a few minutes. How to get clients to chase you by using the formula eight, eight steps to get clients to chase you. And a teardown, you're gonna see three top ranking IT websites and five IT marketing messages analyzed right in front of your eyes. You're also gonna learn why you only need one marketing asset to attract new clients consistently. Hint, you don't even need a website. You're also gonna learn why there's a lot of advice out there, but a lot of the advice is coming uh, let's just say to everyone all at once, instead of at the stage of business you're in, you're going to learn how to prioritize which marketing asset is most leverageable to you. And what you're going to learn is you only need one. You're going to learn how to be seen as proactive by your clients before they become clients and 10 ways IT service providers leverage RMMs, remote monitoring and management platforms to grow their business and tons more. We're going to have a ton of fun. So if you're asking yourself, is this for me? Well, who, here's who this training is for. If you're someone who wants to grow your business or streamline and systematize your processes, this is for you. If you're an IT service provider and MSP who want a step-by-step -step plan and a system, how to attract clients consistently, this is for you. If you're an MSP who's interested in learning new growth models that can help optimize your, their clients, structure of your service or offer, your revenue, and or your time, this is for you you because maybe you've noticed that uh this is from a google trends research so if you look up 
some of these examples, right, from managed service provider, IT, by the way, <laughs> we spelled out managed service provider because if you look up MSP, it has a lot of results, which is almost entertaining. Um, IT services, IT help desk, IT manager, MSPs, IT company, managed services, IT solutions. Look at this, IT services alone. From in the last uh, eight years, essentially, almost nine years, from January 2011 to uh, to date, uh, around the summertime, July, uh, IT service is clearly on the rise, but there's more because managed service providers specifically, the interest tripled since 2011, tripled, and IT help desk has almost doubled, and there's a ton of them. So IT services is on the rise and always will be for one reason, as this little comic says, right? Tech support says the problem is located somewhere between the keyboard and my chair, i.e. his brain. If you're an MSP or an IT service provider, I'm sure this resonates somewhat familiar to you because there's all kinds of problems that people come up against that they need your help with. Humans, no matter whether they're a multi-billionaire, or a uh, multimillionaire, a six-figure earner, or uh, some manager earning whatever. They need help with their tech because tech is complicated. No matter how high tech the tech becomes, humans need help with it. And you are the expert, the genius, the value adder who's there to help them with it. Not to mention the size of the managed services market. So this includes cloud computing, IT infrastructure, and managed IT security. This comes from Statista, which is a very useful site. So in 2018, the size of the managed service market, the MSP IT market, was somewhere hovering just around 170 billion. That was 2018. 2019, we're already passing 170 billion. And as I'm sure you know, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. There are not a billion IT service providers. Uh, by 2023, it's going to cross 260 billion. And in the next four years, four and a half, five years, it's almost at 340 billion. In other words, forecasts suggest that this market will grow to nearly $300 billion as early as 2023 at a 10.8% compound annual growth rate. What that also means is that it's not just growth, it's compound growth because of the rate of technology, every uh, the rate of technology growing and it, not even infiltrating our culture, it is becoming our culture. You are at the right place at the right time. Your big opportunity is that every office, i.e. organization, nonprofit, profit has computers. Every school, every university, everyone is run by computers and computers are soon becoming cloud-based. Right, whether that's mobile phones or mobile apps or whatever, the whole world is becoming cloud-based, i.e. a digital environment. And with a digital environment, there's a lot of attacks, there's a lot of dangers, so not to mention that on top of that, cybersecurity is more urgent than organizations realize. And the MSP model is widely adopted. Being in tech, uh, someone who helps human beings and organizations with tech is one of the hottest growing fastest growing markets available. You're at the right place at the right time because every business and organization on earth needs an IT service today. It's time to meet the demand in a way that works for you because the whole mission of Atera is making IT, is what IT should be to make your life easier so you can focus on what you want. So this is a training to help you achieve exactly what you want. So let's know in the comments if you're up for the opportunity, if you're excited by this. So just before we dig in, I would love to see from you just a little bit of, uh, you know, how, how much this, the, the, the concept is re resonating with you, how excited you are by it. I would love to see that in the comments, in the chat. Um, and again, as Harry mentioned in the beginning, we're going to get to the questions all the way at the end. So, here we are. Hey, I'm typing in. I gave you a woohoo in the comments section. Good man, Harry. Your enthusiasm is, as they say, absolutely contagious. Love it. Uh, so, so there are two sides of the IT brain. And this is essentially answering the question is, how do I get more done while working less? Well, first you need to understand who's the operating system behind your own operating system, which is you. So number one is the tactical. The tactical is someone who focuses on the details where your daily activities and tactics uh, are, are, that's your focus to run the operation. So meaning you're strong in action, but you might be a little bit weak on vision and strategy, 
On the other hand, there's the strategist. The strategist is a visionary, but not so interested in focusing on the details, strong on vision and strategy, weak on process and execution. Whereas in the middle is where the winning formula is, is what I call the ITpreneur. Effectively implement strategies that scale the business without being at the center of it. Having the business run for you, with you, without you, and that is achieved by following these three steps. The three steps equals the ITpreneur with freedom, because that's what everybody wants. It's not just doing the business and giving a great service and being a rock star at helping other organizations and uh, offices and companies with their tech, but it's you also serving you, you having the freedom that you choose working on your terms. So we're going to cover TC, EDM, and the winning structure in terms of a message. That's exactly what we're going to cover, starting with TC. TC stands for, and this is obviously the first step, tribe-centric. It is the shift of being tribe-centric, not how do I grow my business, but how do I add the most amount of value to my specific tribe? And there are three pillars of tribe, i.e. market, i.e. your community, W-I-I-F-M, choice and medicine. We're going to cover and answer all of those, and that's the foundation, the first step to attracting more ideal clients. So did a little Google search, uh, have some family in Richmond, Virginia, of IT service in Richmond, Virginia, right? And I found the top ranking, right, organically. Who doesn't want their site ranking high, i.e. number one on Google? Everybody does. So these are the first two sites, and one is Richmond IT, Managed IT Service in Richmond, Virginia, and the other is um, Richmond's Trusted IT Specialists. Can you answer what's wrong with these number one ranking IT websites? A lot of people starting out will say, if I could only have a top ranking Google website, everyone would be coming to me, my business would run smoothly. So here you have some sites, which this is, num this is the number one, by the way, right? Number one, is it good? Is it bad? Is it, well, the thing is, so first of all, the headline, Richmond IT Managed IT Support in Richmond, Virginia, assumes what? It assumes you're looking for uh, uh, managed IT support and you even know what that means. A lot of business owners, a lot of organizations do not even know what managed IT support even means. Not to mention, it is completely filled with distracting, confusing elements written in uninfluential, unpersuasive ways. In terms of the second one's website, solving problems, even ones you didn't know you had. Sounds valuable, sounds interesting, Right, sounds good, you're solving problems. And then to support that claim, they support we support customers through a continuous four-step process. We can solve problems and keep their business optimized and learn more. So number one, it's a problem of being very vague and also distracting. But let's get very specific in terms of what both of these are missing. Starting off with, you know, what exactly is the goal of this page? Because on the one hand, there's our, you know, there's an option of looking for our Charlotte office. I'm not looking for Charlotte. I Googled Richmond, Virginia, right? And what exactly is it to learn more? Is it to learn about their four-step process of what? Is it to chat? Is it to make the call number? Is it to customer support? Is it what exactly is the goal? Well, here's specifically what's missing. Pillar number one is W-I-I-F-M. This is a pillar of marketing, i.e. a pillar of influence, i.e. a pillar of how to attract your ideal clients. The biggest mistake IT service providers make is speaking about themselves because your tribe is listening to this radio station 24-7 WIIFM, which stands for What's In It For Me. That is what your tribe is listening to. They're always thinking, what's in it for me? And the design and message is entirely confusing with too many choices. So, and then that's the first pillar. The second pillar is choice. If you give too many choices, it's confusing. What By asking the simple question, what's the singular purpose of this marketing asset, i.e. my homepage, i.e. the link I'm putting in a Google search, right? What's the purpose of this? I don't know. Because on the one hand, it looks like the purpose is to say how many offices they have. New York, Jersey City, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Washington. I mean, there's so much stuff here. I don't know the purpose of it. What's the purpose of this? It's not clear. Pillar number two, too many options doesn't convey value. It overwhelms and distracts. You want to be singular in your focus. Now, here's one that's much better. It ranks number four. 
Now, I'm curious if you can see why this is a little bit better. The reason why it's a little bit better is that this is the first one that has a picture of a human being on it. Technically, it has two because also the chat does. And this is a little bit better design, more modern design. But it's all, guess what? It's also a little bit all over the place because it's assuming that you want IT done right. Whereas I just did a Google search. I don't even know necessarily what IT does. Uh, the help desk companies, Richmond, you know, based information technology, it's talking about themselves. It's not talking about me, i.e. the client. We understand your unique challenges and our team can, uh, can help make sure your IT is done right. It's not saying a lot, right? It's very general and it's a lot of options. Now, those are the first two pillars. What's in it for me in choice? And now the third pillar is what I call medicine. So imagine the following scenario. Imagine you've got a headache. Headaches suck, nobody likes them. And you ask a doctor for something to relieve your pain. Hey doc, I have a headache. Can you help me out and give me something to get rid of the headache? Sure, the doctor listens patiently and takes and says to take two of these with a glass of water. No problem, he, this will get rid of your headache. This bottle that says on it, medicine. Here's a bottle of medicine. Would you even take that, right? Would you even take a bottle of medicine? Of course not. We're looking for Advil extra strength. We're looking for extra strength Tylenol, Excedrin for pain. We're looking for all things specifically on headaches, not medicine, headache medicine, right? Something specific. As Jeff Bezos said, um, our goal is to be Earth's most customer-centric company. And by being customer-centric, that means by applying and providing and diagnosing almost a specific solution to a specific problem that the customer wants, right? It sounds overly simplistic, but if you're not doing it, you're not leveraging it. So if you have notes or you have the PDF worksheet, take notes in your worksheet now, because this is where this becomes a workshop and you take notes so that you follow and take action by answering four questions to drill in on your tribe so you answer all those three pillars. Number one is who's your ideal client? Number two, what do they want most? Number three, why do they really want it? And number four, what are their potential objections? We're gonna go in depth in this step by step so that you are walk away right now in step number one with more clarity on who your ideal client is. What specific industry are they in? What specific area are they in? How much money do they make? How many employees or endpoints do they have? What are their characteristics? By clarifying, right, how long does this take? It takes about a minute, right, to really think about it. But if you're going through this and you're asking yourself these questions, you're getting clarity and you're guiding your own brain that the next time you have a potential conversation with a potential client, you're going to be reverse engineering your thinking to find and to qualify if this is someone I wanna work with in the first place. You're building your own foundation, right? And you wanna know, do, do you wanna to market to everyone or do you wanna work in a specific industry where people are more profitable? Wouldn't it be important to know how much money your, your ideal client is earning? Or are you just completely open even if it's an unprofitable or, uh, business or organization? Or do you just want, right? Of course you wanna find your sweet spot because it's impossible to, to attract thousands and thousands and thousands of clients if you're a one or two or three man shop. Even if you're a 10 man shop, you're not gonna attract thousands and thousands of potential clients, maybe hundreds at the most, but you're also gonna want them to be specific. Number two, what do they want? What are their specific or current problems or challenges? What are they suffering through? Why do they want your help? What are the specific desired solutions or results that they need your help with? What are the specific fears or worries that they have that they need you to make them feel safe or taken care of or secure? What's their 11 star experience? Now I got and learned about this 11 star experience from none other than, curious by the way, if this uh, picture or this face looks familiar, his name is Brian Chesky. He's the co-founder and uh, CEO, if I'm not mistaken, of Airbnb. And when they were first designing Airbnb, they, they said, what could be what would be like a three-star experience of having a, a guest come to an Airbnb uh, hosted hosted uh, apartment or home, right? So, well, a three-star three would be 
uh, it's clean, right? And there's good communication. A four star would be if there's like a, a handwritten note on their bed that says, hey, uh, hey, Jeff, you know, so happy that you're here. Uh, have a great stay. Um, you know, and here's a few things and directions or coupons or something. A five star experience would that you know what kind of food that they like. Number uh, a six star experience is you keep on, in other words, you keep on going up and up and up until you come to an 11 star experience where their mind is blown. And it, it's such an extreme example where, like, you know, you're picking them up in a private jet, you have their favorite rock band to pick them up. You, someone got a tattoo of their name on their back, you know, like you're just you're losing it in terms of giving them an 11 star experience. So and now, of course, nobody even gives an 11 star experience, but hypothetically, what you do want is to know what do they want? What would make, make them really, really happy? And why do they want it? Start with why. Why are people looking for your help in the first place? In other words, what business are you really in? Are you really in uh, the business of updating passwords and updating networks and scanning networks and uh, updating systems? Or are you really in the business of making business owners feel secure? Are you really in the productivity business? Are you really in the increasing revenue business? In other words, chunking up where you're adding the most amount of value in the terms of, the, of your ideal client, how they're thinking about it. Uh, as Gerald Zaltman, Harvard Business School professor said, 95% of business buying decisions take place unconsciously, which means when you're speaking with an ideal client, they're not thinking rationally. They might be speaking rationally, but they're thinking unconsciously, irrational. They want something and you need to know what that is. Yet, most offers are made with logic only. If you want to increase the conversion of the conversations that you have that turn potential clients into clients is by, uh, is, is by knowing that. What's their unconscious desire? And what are their objections, right? Put yourself in their shoes. What are they already thinking or assuming? Why would they object to your service? Knowing this all in advance makes you exponentially more persuasive, more confident, and more powerful. That's how to get what you want by knowing in advance what it is that you want and who it is that you want to work with. By the way, if you don't know the answers to those questions, just ask your clients. Asking your clients is something we always do at Atera. We have tons and tons of conversations with our clients constantly because we always wanna know what is it that you want? What is it, how is it that we can help you? By getting to know them on a more uh, uh, a better understanding basis, you're going to be able to add value. That's the foundation. That's step number one. Step number two is EDM. This is where the rubber meets the road. EDM equals education-based marketing. Not talking about yourselves, but educating your potential audience about what it is that you do. Now, here's what we're going to cover in EDM, education-based marketing. Number one, why Warren Buffett's business partner raved about this method how education-based marketing turns prospects into clients, how using an ST makes marketing easy, and how to use the winning Formula 8 structure. You're going to learn an offline strategy and a simple online strategy. The power of this strategy becomes uh, begins with making a fundamental psychological shift from a bee who chases the honey to the flower who attracts the bee. You don't want to be someone who chases, you want to be someone who attracts, where the bees are the people who chase the flower, the honey. You're the one where the clients are chasing you. So how do you shift from chasing to attracting? You shift by EDM. So what is EDM? Well, to start, let's say your goal is to attract three clients in 30 days. Really straight up simple example, right? Three clients, 30 days, that's my goal for the next month. And let's say I put you in front of an audience of 100 people, which essentially means you're going to you have the wherewithal to, to hit your goal immediately. But you only have seven minutes to speak. And right before I introduce you, I say anyone can leave if they're not interested, which means that you got to get their attention. So what do you say? Right. You have the opportunity right in front of you. You can have everything that you want out of 100 people. Of course, you can get three clients. But if they're not interested, they're going to leave. So what do you say? Hey guys, uh, I'm an IT service provider, uh, creator of Richmond, Virginia IT services. Um, anybody have a computer in this office? In other words, what are you gonna say that's gonna attract them, right? So I learned this uh, principle from none other than, as Harry said in the beginning, Chet Holmes. 
Chet Holmes, if you're not familiar, the picture that you're looking at is a picture of Charlie Munger, the billionaire and business partner of Warren Buffett, who said that Chet Holmes is America's greatest sales and marketing executive in America. Chet Holmes himself said, um, I've had the pleasure and the honor to become friends with his daughter, who is now the CEO of Chet Holmes International. Um, and this strategy is being used today over and over and over in countless businesses. And Chet Holmes said, people will come to you way faster and stay with you way longer to learn something of value than they ever will come to just be sold to. Nobody wants to be sold. Everybody wants to get something of value, to learn something of value. That's education-based marketing. Now, now to drill hey, in a little Ari, bit, even, yeah. Yeah, Ari, I, I, I reached behind in my CNN bookcase and look at what I'm holding, my friend. I went on camera for a second. I'm holding the book. <laughs> oh, good man. You Oh, you're a pro, Harry. You're yeah, an absolute more, pro. And more oh, importantly, it's got yellow sticky. Ari, I actually read the book. Please continue. <laughs> how, well, the, 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 how, many quest, how many times did you read it? I'm you know, assuming more. It, no, I've read it twice. I read it once, uh, end to end, and underlying passages. And then I also bought the audio version. And with my stationary bicycle, I would listen to it. So I've read it twice. Good man, Harry. And how helpful was it for you? Oh, it's a classic. I, I loaned it to my son over the summer. So it's a classic. Please Good continue, man. my friend. All right. Yes, it is a classic. It's awesome. Uh, so this is where this buyer's pyramid comes from, uh, from Harry and I's one of our favorite marketing books. Um, so in any given market, right, out of 100 people who are uh, sitting in that stadium about to listen to you, 3% are buying now. And, and, and whether it's from buying cars or buying a computer or hiring an IT provider, IT service provider, 3% in any given market are buying right now. They're asking themselves, where is the IT service, right? 3%. So that's only 3%. 7% are like open to it. They're not in any kind of internal rush to get it done, but they're open to it. Another 30% are not thinking about it. Not to say that they're against it, they're just not even thinking about it, right? Then the other 30% don't think that they're interested. 30% don't think that they need an IT service provider. And the final 30% are definitely, absolutely, hands down against IT services. They will not hear of it, right? That's the buyer's pyramid. In any given market, those are the buyers. And that's what they look like. Now, most IT services only, th only think and are chasing and are looking for the people who are buying now. So if you search in, uh, which is essentially the B, right? It, it, it's, it's chasing. You're buying now. Let me get your attention. Let me get you to hire, hire, hire me, right? So after learning that, I want to hear from you. Comment below, do the following IT marketing messages chase or attract? Are they trying to get a client or are they attracting a client? So look at this. Now, again, this is this is a Google search of IT Service Richmond, Virginia. It's obviously chasing but because it's, first of all, assuming that the person looking at this is ready to buy, ready to win, ready to contact them. But it's essentially chasing because it's not adding any value. It's not teaching anything. It's not showing anything. By the way, to get a little bit more specific in terms of what's missing, this assumes that the audience is the 3%. There is no direct benefit because it's just talking about them. There's too many visual choices, so it's confusing. And it's filled with platitude instead of being conversational. Platitudes means uh, a word or a phrase that, be, that has been used so many times, it no longer means anything. It's no longer a valuable statement, such as proud to deliver the best, competitive prices, proven experience, and unbeatable support, right? That's like, com that, uh, th those feel like they're coming out straight out of a 1970s, 1980s uh, commercial selling whatever. Th those phrases might have been useful in the 50s, but they're not, they're platitudes now. Conversational is having a human being conversation, right? There's even a whole thing that's, that's evolving right now called conversational marketing. So I'll explain in step-by-step -step detail how to craft a message that attracts in a few minutes, but in the meantime, grade the messages in the comments from one to 10. Now here's one uh, to download this report before hiring an IT consultant. So here's what this is offering. Well, first of all, it's offering value because it's a downloadable report. Uh, so that's already not talking about themselves. And, and what they're saying is how to determine how confident your IT service provider is, key differences between managed IT, time and materials reacted by it, what you should expect to pay for. In other words, it's, it's definitely good, 
Um, it's more attractive because someone will want it. it. Could it be better? Yes, because it could be a lot more educational, a lot more beneficial, and a lot more uh, specific in terms of what they need. Um, here's another one. It's a little bit long, but keeping IT simple. The Small Business Owner's Guide to Finding a Professional. These are all guys, by the way, which is an interesting approach. Um, I'm curious if this is even outdated because who's looking for a guide to hire someone? They more, they don't, they're not looking so much for a guide, but they are looking for help in terms of what they need help with. So this is attractive because again, it's offering value, right? A small business owner's guide to hiring, finding a professional competent IT service provider. This is actually my favorite, I have to say, because it says 98% of organizations say a single hour of downtime costs over a hundred thousand dollars now that is highly attractive because it's information that instantly positions your work as so valuable that if their if if their network goes down for an hour it costs them a hundred thousand dollars that's most organizations so immediately they're thinking oh my god well i guess we didn't have downtime the other week or whatever they're instantly in, in, in a need mode because you've addressed very specifically a problem. Now that's not exactly offer it anything. There's no call to action. There's nothing to get, but that information itself is attractive. So those, th those are all the beginning, right? So now before I introduce the ST to you to see the easy way of doing marketing that quickly grows your business, let's ask a very simple question. What do most IT and MSPs say they should be doing to market their business. And I've heard this from MSPs specifically. Well, there's optimizing my website, having a more informative blog, engaging newsletter, I gotta send that out, having case studies for my blog, I definitely should have better SEO, I should be doing Facebook ads, everybody's doing that, I gotta do retargeting Facebook ads at least, I also should have better Google ads and offers, I gotta follow up with all those leads that I contacted, I should have an autoresponder email series. I should have better onboarding, better sales process. I need really need to streamline my marketing and sales. I should actually hire a salesperson. I should be doing social media. All those guys are saying I need to be posting constantly. LinkedIn's rising right now. I need to have LinkedIn content. I should have engaging Instagram content. I should be doing those Instagram stories. I should have more engaging Facebook posts. Start a podcast, interview clients, partner with local stores, monthly recurring revenue streams, more public speaking, be a better speaker, have an exit strategy. It's too much, but that's the advice that is coming out of so many people. The good news is that you can relax because all that is sort of nonsense. Not only is there an easy way, but all those steps are for a certain stage of business. In other words, just to go specifically with social media, so you should is social media uh, an option to grow your business? Absolutely, but if you're not making $100,000 yet, Posting a lot on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook is not going to get you uh, directly clients, but an ST will, right? So there are four core phases, which we can cover in another training, but most IT and MSPs are thinking about the right thing, right? All, the, all that list was the right thing, but it's at the wrong time because unless you have a team, unless you're already profitable, unless you're already making $100,000, most of those things are not relevant because you want to reverse engineer, reverse engineer what is the result that I want? And what are the few minimum steps that I need to take in order to hit that goal? So the next time your brain says you should do more, just listen to these words. To attract IT clients easily, just do an ST. An ST is all you need because now an ST means a signature talk. Now there's an offline and an online model, but what I wanna help you with is having a model that's simple, easy and repeatable and that it works. A signature talk is a strategic, valuable and education-based talk that turns even cold prospects into clients faster than any other strategy on earth. And here's why, no one wants to be sold to. No one wants to hear someone else talk about themselves. Everyone wants to get or learn something that will add value to them. People will stay and listen if something is benefit, interesting and valuable to them. So going back to the buyer's pyramid, you just 22x increased your potential audience by 22 times by having a signature talk, an education-based marketing talk, because now it's educational. So people who are open to it, people who are not thinking about it, or people who don't even think that they're interested are interested because it's valuable to them. You're not selling them anything with an ST. The only question is, 
how do you structure your ST? Well, here's a proven winning structure that's going to make it super easy for you. What's important though is before you take action on this, do it only after you've completed your tribe centric exercise because it's built on the foundation that you know who you're talking to. So take notes right now. This brings us to step number three, the winning structure. So here's an example of an ST any MSP can give. Number one is you have a headline, and then number two, how to structure your ST in any medium. Online, offline, we'll cover a few different examples. Let's say three ways to solve problem. X ways or steps to solve specific problem. An example of that could be five steps to bulletproof your business from expensive and dangerous cyber attacks. That's just one example. There are almost an infinite, but X ways or steps to achieve result from problem, right? To solve a problem. And that's the headline. Then now here's the formula eight ST structure. We're going to start with the introduction and the problem. So first is the strategic intro and, defin and define a problem. Now, again, what we're going to cover is this is this could be a live talk. This could be a meetup. This could be an online video. This could be a webinar. Uh, this could be any medium and we'll get into the medium. But first, we're going to go into the structure. Number one is you want to give an introduction of who you are and why they should listen to you, i.e. position yourself. So your name is um, whatever your name is. You're an owner of a specific business that helps. Uh, let's So let's say my name is Jeff. I own IT Pros, IT Pros of Richmond. Dot com and I help businesses doing between one and three million dollars in Richmond, Virginia, uh, ha be completely safe from enemy cyber attacks and increase their productivity by 50% um, with my business. That's what we do. In other words, it might be a little bit lengthy, but it is compelling. Now, in terms of the problem, you would say 43%, you would start off with some. Now, I I'm giving some examples, but you're, you're, it's really just introduction and problem. So an example of a problem is using a statistic like 43% of all cyber attacks target small businesses, right? So if you're talking to small businesses, knowing almost half of them are targeted by cyber attacks is uh, compelling. No business owner wants their data, data stolen, bank account depleted, or customer list, list breached. Nobody wants that, right? So you introduce yourself and then you go straight to the problem because as soon as you address the problem, they want it solved. Then you want to articulate the desired result. The result is you want to be bulletproof, secure, and in control, not in theory, but with the most advanced systems to guarantee your safety, security, and ability to focus on what's really important. By the way, of course, I'm giving the example of all of this through the frame of cybersecurity. It can be whatever it is you want to talk about, but the Formula 8, I'm just giving examples. You want to follow the structure. Intro and problem, now result. What's really important is growing your business and serving your customers. Right. So you go from problem to result and then to qualify your credibility, you talk a little bit about the results that you've achieved. So then as soon as they're in problem state and now result state, now they want to know, can you can are you the person to deliver on that? So you give some case studies, you give a testimonial, you get a statistic. Now that instantly gives you credibility. Now, once you have credibility. Right. So where are we now in terms of the experience of your tribe? Number one, they're in a state of problem where they have a problem in their head that they want it solved. They know the result that they want. They know and trust that you can do it. But now if you want to sort of uh, go a little bit deeper, you want to tell a story of how you discovered that. The purpose of telling a story is to engage with them on an emotional level. And that is something extremely powerful that I highly recommend every MSP do in any of their marketing and messaging. Now this can be either why you started your business or how you discovered a unique security method. I um, mean, here's really a really simple structure. It's what I call the Hollywood method of telling a story um, without going into too much detail. This is from uh, Joseph Campbell. Call to adventure, what what got you started? Uh, you know, so I grew up, I'm, I'm, I myself am from Richmond, Virginia. I grew up and um, my, my uh, local hospital was attacked by cyber attacks and someone knew that I was into tech and I just came in there and um, I didn't know what to do because it was this hor it was this huge organization. I was only 18 years old, uh, and the and the whole hospital was down for some reason. No one else in Richmond, Virginia, was able to solve it. And then I realized, wait a second, I have a really unique method of addressing cybersecurity attacks. I have unique whatever it is that that method is. I had a big aha moment. I discovered something. Then, even though being 18 years old, I, I fixed everything. And then I realized, wait a second, if 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 too many companies and organizations in Richmond, Virginia 
are suffering from cyber attacks, well, I, I, I can help them. And plus this method is so easy, anybody can use it, right? So then this year, and now I'm on a mission to make sure that every business in Richmond, Virginia is secure and safe. So the, the purpose of this uh, story is to have a relationship and deeper engagement. Number five is the framework of the solution. They want to know, okay, how at this point, how, how, how did you do that? What's, what's, your, what's your framework? So this is the core content se section. This is where you actually teach or train or give valuable content away. And as soon as they hear this from you, they're going to like, this guy knows his stuff, right? And the purpose of cor course is that they've learned something that helps them in advance and in without being related to becoming a client. Here's a tip, by the way, always use numbered content. If you paid attention, I use numbered content throughout, i.e. five steps, five ways, three ways, formula eight. It's all numbered content. And the reason is because it's much easier for the brain to know, well, if it's for, if it's a formula eight, then there is only eight steps, right? You're not giving it away. You're building a deeper bond with your tribe who will soon become clients because they have been given a lot of value. By the way, here's a 10X tip. If you're an MSP, you can see the difference in value of your model versus the typical model in an educational frame so that they're more open to learning a better model. In other words, you, 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 you absolutely want to raise the, the value of what it is that you do uh, by reframing it as unique and valuable. You want to cover the big mistake that, that uh, most businesses, i.e. their tribe, are making i.e. not keeping their doors locked at night. If you leave your doors open, that's on you, right? Prevention is being proactive about your business and customers. The number one mistake all these local businesses make is this, right? Security isn't an expense. It's a foundation of every business. And then you want to go to the big myth, right? Because now this, this also means the mistake in the myth means that you understand them. By addressing the myth, as soon as you, the, the biggest myth of cybersecurity is you think it'll never happen to you and that it's not worth that risk. According to Yahoo in 2017, US consumers lost almost $20 billion in cyber attacks. So, and not one of them expected it to happen. They all thought it would happen to someone else. So that's the myth of cybersecurity. And then, then you transition from content to making an offer, not just an offer, but an irresistible one. Make your offer irresistible. You want to summarize the maze, takeaways, giving away, custom. You can give. Now, you can either make an offer to become clients on the spot, or you can give away a custom cybersecurity audit. Once they've been influenced by your genius and value and expertise, you're giving something away for free as well as a personalized audit. And now in those audits, you get benefit A, benefit B, benefit C. Normally, these audit costs whatever they cost, but for the next five people, because I only have so much time in my calendar, you can get a cybersecurity audit for free. By the way, uh, audits in general are not unique, but what this, what's unique about this is how you are presenting it. It's presented and uh, positioned as very valuable, and they're going to want it in the context of learning about cybersecurity and trusting you. And then finishing with a call to action. Uh, fill in the form, apply here, uh, you know, reply to this number. Everyone applies as an excited, interested, and qualified potential client. Now you have clients who are chasing you because you've added value, you've positioned yourself, you've talked about what they need, they want to get it from you. Here's the offline method. Now you can create a meetup group, which is fun and valuable, and it's community-based. And now you can create your own, or you can be a guest speaker in another group. By the way, is a quick, really super quick, in Richmond, Virginia, uh, it is funny that we're going all in on Richmond today. Uh, so these are tech groups in Richmond. Now guess guess how many, right? The first few you see um, has a few thousand, one, two, three, four, almost four to 5,000 people in the first six alone. Now guess how many there are? There are, wait for it, 99 tech meetup groups in Richmond, Virginia alone. You probably would have never imagined in your life that there are thousands of people who are interested in this stuff. So you give a talk at a local meetup and bam, you've got interested, qualified clients potentially. Yeah. Here's a hey, little, Ari, yeah. 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 If you don't mind, I, I, I want to interject in here. So uh, back in the days where knights were bold and kings had all the gold, we uh, recommended people kind of create a local answers group for technology on LinkedIn. So say Portland, Oregon, and you, you know, you answer how, how, how to print, or I can't print, you answer the question. 
it's the same concept. Now, this is very interesting to me because with Microsoft acquiring LinkedIn, and we maintain a couple groups, we we have seen a drop in LinkedIn group activity. They're kind of hidden. Um, I applaud uh, the meetup site. The meetup sites are on fire. So very good example. So folks, pivot from LinkedIn groups to meetups is a little bit more, or what am I trying to say? A little bit more engaging, exciting uh, activities. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. And also the, the fun thing about meetups is the frame in which people enter them. It's community, it's fun, it's easy, it's light. So inherently, it's a lot less resistance. Um, and as an additional sort of tip is if you're a local, that's a huge advantage, right? You're not marketing online to everyone. You're a local. You're, you're, you're part of a community anyways. So you want to emphasize your love of your area and in your messaging. By doing that, it's 10 times more attractive to local leads and small businesses. That's what I would call persuasion. Uh, in other words, the, the, you're persuasive before you're persuasive because you're part of a group, you're part of a tribe, you're part of a community. You know, everyone in, in this area of, of Seattle really deserves the bet. It all of a sudden means you're one group, right? And then that's, that's the offline strategy. Then there's an online strategy. Here's a big breakthrough. You do not need a fancy website to attract leads. Put another way, what's the purpose of having a website at all? You only need an online signature talk. There are only five kinds you can use. Uh, here are some mediums, a video, audio, right? Whether that's a three minute video, 10 minute video, 20 minute video, 50 minute, 60 minute, two hour video, it doesn't matter. As long as you're adding value and people are watching, uh, they will watch as long as it's adding value. Audio, such as a podcast or just putting up an, an audio uh, recording, a report or an ebook, a webinar such as this, YouTube or Facebook, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, Right, those, those are all the five mediums that you need. Um, so just to summarize, right, here's where they are. Uh, let's see, email, Facebook, Instagram, social media, right, Google and YouTube, that's where people are hanging out online. Uh, or a partner, um, a partner is, uh, now that could be a local partner, like a restaurant emails their, uh, their email list of, hey, anyone here interested in, uh, you know, being safe from cyber attacks along those lines. Now that's where they are. Then the question is, well, what do they want? What is the value that you can provide? They are interested in learning about what you have to offer them as long as it's you know, solving a problem and helping them with the solution through a report, a video series, an audio book, a webinar, or live webcast. They will, they, 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 they will consume that content and therefore be influenced by you. And then the next step is by adding value and knowing where they are is to attract them as client. You wanna follow up with an irresistible offer message to turn attention into clients. It looks simple, it is simple. Doesn't mean it won't take work and doesn't, doesn't mean it won't take time, but it is simple. And again, it's all about reverse engineering to get the result that you're looking for. So at this stage, uh, how do your potential clients feel about you after they've listened to that signature talk? They know, they like, and they trust you. And if you really use a good story well, they'll love you. And by the way, I think they'll love you just by you being you. It's how it works. As soon as you're, you're positioning yourself as adding value, people are attracted to you and they appreciate it. How are you positioned in their mind? As needing clients or highly attractive, right? You give a signature talk, you're highly attractive. And number three, do they see you more as a commodity or as a deeply needed unique service tailor-made to help their business grow? Much, much more powerful than having a high-ranking Google website. This is a system and a method that works. So quick recap, why the you learned why the IT service industry is booming, very exciting. You learn how to attract more ideal clients by knowing who they are in advance. You learn how to structure your education-based marketing message and the headline. And you learned a simple offline and online method to generate clients consistently. So right now you might be asking yourself, okay, now that I'm getting all these clients consistently, What's the best way to give the best service in the world to my clients without being overworked? And by the way, I want to emphasize without being overworked because all of this means you're going to get the clients. But how do you do it in such a way where you're not overworked? How do you do that? Right. So here's what worked for these IT service providers who not only attracted clients, but were able to manage and provide value for them in a way that uh, saved them time and money. So. 
Here's a comment. Honestly, moving to Otera has given us the ability to cut back the amount of people needed and expand the amount of customers. We built in a lot of automation self-service on the customer side and stay away from the home users and customers that require a lot of on-site. By the way, that's a unique focus on Tribe, right? They know who they want and Atera, the remote monitoring and management platform, the RMM, helped them do that. Uh, this program, Atera, has helped transform my business. This is from Chuck Stacy, who's added $60,000 in contracts by switching to Atera. It's a secret weapon. And he, another comment is, I could go on with a detailed list of the features that I like, but I highly recommend starting a trial and see for yourself how Atera can help you and your company. And here's one from Chris. Atera has transformed his business. We hear that a lot. And instead of giving you, you know, there's, there's a lot, a lot of positive comments, and it's all because it's an RMM, and an RMM streamlines your IT service, but you don't need to spend $100,000, $50,000 on an RMM. There's an affordable way. So if you're not yet leveraging an RMM, or remote monitoring and management platform, here are 10 ways that an RMM can help you leverage and grow your business once you're already attracting clients. So first, you're able to proactively help your clients because you know when problems are coming up and you're able to address them in advance. Plus, you're able to give them reports so that they know that they're being serviced uh, very effectively. Remotely manage more clients efficiently. It saves you time. Remotely monitor customers' devices. Extremely powerful. Onboard technicians to expand your service offering. You get real-time alerts. You identify and automate software update patches. You streamline your support with ticketing. You can pre-configure administrative and maintenance tasks. You get billing and invoicing, so it doesn't have to be so manual and annoying, and network discovery for scalability. By the way, we're about to um, launch uh, a really revolutionary, revolutionary network discovery platform that no one else in the industry uh, is using exactly like this, and it's obviously affordable, uh, so it's, it's very exciting. So you definitely want to get started as soon as possible because every IT service wants to give the best service. They want to earn more. They want to work less and proactively solve problems before they happen, which is why we created Atera in the first place. You can use Atera for an all-in-one RMM and PSA. You get unlimited devices, so it's not expensive. You pay per technician, so it's affordable. You have automation, reporting, ticketing, 24-7 support and no contract or hidden fees. You can start your 30-day free trial right now by just going to atera.com forward slash sign up, completely free. And after your trial ends, and you could give it a full run for 30 days, and you know, again, no contracts, a pro account is only $79 a month, which is pretty, pretty awesome because you save a lot of money. As one MSP uh, said, he saved $10,000 a year by using Atera. So I say... Uh, Harry, what do you say about answering some questions if there are some? Yep, can you hear me now? I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. I, uh, I, I was on screen number two paying my uh, bill for broadband connectivity so I don't go down. Whew, all right, I'm back. <laughs> uh, we, have 18, we have 18 questions um, or 18 entries. Uh, a lot of these are from people with their geographic reference early in your uh, your thing. So let me let me expand my screen on the Q and A piece. And uh, all right, let's both go back on camera if you don't mind. Let's let's keep it real. Good idea. I just turned it on. We're keeping right. it real. Keeping it real. Rock and roll. All right. All right. I, put, I put my clothes back on, but I'll leave. <laughs> too much information. You're hilarious. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, Carl Katz. Uh, I'll, I'll go down these quickly. We have a couple legitimate right. questions, but a shout out. Carl Katz over in uh, Vancouver, uh, BC, Gavin in Toronto. Goodness, a lot of Canadians. Les Connor up in Manitoba. Um, let's see, Robert in Texas, Mark in Chicago. Folks, just doing this because it's a lot of fun. We had Rick over in Portland, Oregon, where I was last week, and Daryl Roberts in Smoky, Southern California. Hey, Ken in Houston, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now some questions. And forgive me if I don't shout out to you. Um, we have uh, Jeff asking, compare... Atira to ConnectWise Automate. And and Ari, if you don't mind, we are headed into overtime. So um, I'm sure you could write a book on, you know, a battle card comparison. But quickly, Atira to ConnectWise Automate, please. 
At Terra to Connect wise, uh, I would definitely look up instead of taking the time on this because I'm much better on the marketing. You definitely look up a Terra versus Connect wise. We created a whole landing page with a comparison going over in depth and detail, uh, much more than I'd be able to articulate in depth and detail specifically through it. So Google that you'll find a page and if you don't find it email our support team but we we have a whole page explaining not only that but against um every other rmm and psa as well okay and that's the right answer thank you very we're we're kind of a cable news uh, network world man where the, they they have to be quick little sound bites so ready to go uh, we have george asking can you utilize a terra in more restrictive compliance environments such as gcc so the question is restrictive compliance environments that's an advanced question and i love it um i would i would recommend getting a more advanced technical answer by emailing our support team okay great support, support at terra.com all righty and what makes you different from solar winds yeah, so all the comparison questions, which are fantastic for for I definitely email support because we have people who are trained in giving a lot of these answers. But the rough the rough example, uh, the quick example uh, with solar winds is that we're a lot more afford. It, it really depends on the business. I need to understand more about his business and how he's using it. I've spoken with a lot of people who switch specifically from solar winds, and they specifically said not only are they saving money, but there was a lot of things in solar winds that they were not using so that they were wasting money and then now they're they're getting a lot more uh benefit and it's 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 extremely affordable uh versus solar winds there's an, okay. almost no comparison in terms of price but you get a lot of a tremendous value supported well, okay. yeah and and we actually have a price question that we can hit head on this this is related carl katz up in vancouver bc up north of me uh i i think we're both around 32 degrees this morning it's cold um he asked uh the unlimited devices for $79 a month, or is it $79 a month per technician? Go. $79 a month with unlimited devices per technician. So per technician, you get unlimited devices. Every time you increase a technician, um, it's another $79. But with one technician, it's unlimited devices. Okay, and Carl says, cool, we have Jason asking uh how is the hand holding from moving from a psa such as pulseway so i i think he's asking how is it coming over to your side from an existing solution it's simple because it's it's straight there's no contracts there's no service fees you you don't need a whole training it's a whole different world it's much more intuitive and simple and beautiful and easy and we hear that a lot every day and then I, I have to reword this one from Sean. Sean, you naughty, naughty person uh, in the I got to reword this one. Uh, there's uh, families listening, but Sean, I'll, I, I, I get the question. Sean is essentially asking about uh, using um, a model or uh, 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 a female photo, a model on the web page to attract additional attention. And I mean, that's that's actually a legitimate question because in the world of media, we, we can actually have conversations about, okay, we need three models to do this commercial, right? That's actually a legitimate conversation. Sean's being a little cheeky up online, but um, what is your experience with uh, uh, stock photos, attractive men and women? Um, again, legitimate question. It's an absolutely le legitimate question. I wanna qualify it in a few different ways. Number one, what you put out is what's attractive. If you put out, let's say, uh, the most beautiful model on planet Earth, uh, how is that providing any value to what the problem and the solution is that your tribe wants? It's it's not conveying any value. That's number one. Number two, you're attracting, unless you want to be working with people who only want to be working with people who are attracted to extremely attractive women, it's of no, you're attracting the wrong kind of people in, in the first and the second place. And then thirdly, you, you were not qualifying the right person. In other words, I would think completely different. Get rid of that thinking. Not having anything to do with women and models, but what's the problem, what's the solution, and what's your value? And if women and models have anything to do with that, that's fine. But you wanna think strategically, not just like general. Yeah, okay, next question. Uh, Jason is asking, uh, does your solution include document documentation management like IT Glue? Uh, documentation management, I do believe, um, but I would definitely email support at aterra.com okay. for, all, for, all for all the things that you get. Okay. 
Uh, Jason saying that I could be the model on the web page. Um, okay, Ch thank you, Jay. I'll Jason take that as a compliment. <laughs> Jason should be. And he comes back with an LOL. Carl Katz, uh, another legitimate question. Um, I have colleagues who do vacation coverage for me. I imagine I would need one additional license for my coverage technician. Okay. Great. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's it's both a question and an answer. Um, so with that said, I think we have uh, uh, plowed through the, uh, uh, actually, uh, Jason, we'll, we'll t make yours the last one um, on uh, what is the seven by 24 support? Where is the support base? That's the final question and I'll wrap up the webinar. Um, around the world, depending on the hours that they need. So we have some support um, in Israel, some in Romania, some in the US, depending on what they need. Um, so when you email them, they'll address you uh, where where you need. Okay, I, I actually have a question on that. That is, um, year, years ago when we started the journey with Atira, I think you had some employees in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. I don't know if you're still yeah. doing that. I, I haven't asked that question in a while. Yeah, Jan, Jan is in the Netherlands, correct. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, and a lot of you ask about the presentation. So yes, when Jenny writes the thank you email in the morning, um, you will get the uh, the presentation, the PDF and the deck. So Ari, we did go a little bit uh, over and I sure appreciate, uh, again, this, this was a true value add. Um, a shout out once again to the Ultimate Sales Machine book and wait for it, wait for it. The other book that impacted my career the e myth Good. revisited. Become yeah. the owner, not the pie maker. Be the owner of the bakery, not the pie maker. With that said, mm -hmm. I'm going to go down and uh, I'm going to go to the kitchen, aka bakery, and refill my coffee. So, Ari, thank you very much, folks. Thank you for joining us. Uh, November 6th in the New York City area, Newark. I will be at Channel Pro SMB all day. And also uh, the third week of November, I will be in Denver, Colorado at Ingram One. We'll see you there. Have a great day back to the salt mine. Thank you, Harry. Great connecting, man. Thanks everyone for attending. Great seeing you. Have a good one.